you're, I was getting worn out, just f- drained mentally and physically from the lead generation and the constant. You know, Coach Burt talks about it all the time how it takes more energy to convert a new relationship than it is to nurture an existing relationship. But it's the it's the concept of building an undisruptible business. If you're chasing leads, that means you're you're chasing new relationships. Those those lead sources are going to dry up in times of economic hardship, environmental disasters, things like that. But you've got these relationships. If you've got a business that's built on relationships, in my opinion, it's undisruptible. So I'd say that's part one, and then part two is scale. Like these teams that are doing a hundred million, two hundred million dollars in transactions a year, they're not chasing; they're attracting. Jason leads the number one real estate team on the Alabama Gulf Coast and is the CEO of Impact Agent, a coaching and events company for real estate agents. He specializes in helping team leaders build profitable teams on the foundations of culture and accountability. All right, sweet. So today we are with Jason Will. We are still in Dallas. And before we jump into today's episode, Jason, for everybody listening, please tell us who you are, what you do what you love, what you hate, what you believe. Oh my God. Just tell us who you are. <laughs> so a 20 minute intro, <laughs> man, that's, that's too short. Oh really? Okay, good. Well, uh, <laughs> just let me know. Just tap my foot if I run too long, but, um, hi everybody. I'm Jason will. I run the uh, number one real estate team on the Alabama Gulf coast and, um, post launch of our first live event impact agent conference. I launched a coaching business, so um, just kind of, kind of feeling that out at the moment. But that's that's what I do. Sweet. Outside of real estate, what do you do? Man, not a whole lot. Um, you know, I uh, am uh, obsessed with content creation, and you know, just furthering, uh, as Coach Burt would say, my 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 person of interest level. So, uh, just consuming content, podcasts, books, just webinars, anything I can get my hands on, um, working on two book projects right now. So I've got a lot of irons in the fire. Um, but as a family, we love to travel. So we do unplug and, uh, and travel quite a bit. We take, you know, over four vacations a year. So traveling is what we love to do as a family. So in order to grow and in order to produce this team that you stated was the number one on the Alabama Gulf Coast, correct? Correct. What What would you say your thing is? Like, are you guys good at cold calling? Are you guys good at door knocking? Are you guys good at marketing? Like, what is the thing that makes you guys stand out? I'm sure there's a lot, but what's that main thing that you guys want to focus on? Well, we're in an interesting time right now because we have been a power dialing team since inception which was late 2010, really started getting our wheels turning early, early 2011. But we're in a shift right now because we have been chasing business for the longest time. Um, when you've got, you know, four or five, 600 new leads coming in a month, you really don't have time to love on your, your SOI. And we're just constantly trying to, you know, convert these leads into relationships and we haven't been loving on our people. And it's, we're going through this very difficult mindset shift because, you know, my agents are required to spend a certain amount of time on the phone. It's speed to lead. It's all that stuff that, that any of these uh, real estate team owners have heard before, you know, that we preach and that we hold them accountable to. And uh, it's caused a great deal of burnout and even burnout within myself. So, you know, I am starting a coaching business, but I have been coached since I've been in real estate. And sometimes, um, you know, even if you consider yourself coachable, some of the things don't stick. Uh, You know, it takes a while for some of these things to kind of finally sink in. So we're into attraction mode right now and and stop chasing the business. So we're, we're taking money away from Zillow. Uh, away from all these paid leads. Like I was just, you know, I had a group of mentors when I got started and, you know, it was kind of like it it evolved into this fun game where we would see like we were constantly texting each other and talking on the phone. Where was the next shiny little object going to come? 
And we would stroke a check, and it was just all about leads. It wasn't mm. about relationships. Mm, mm, mm. Get me started on you, that. You've probably heard that a lot before. So, um, so that's where we are right now. Is we're pulling all that money back, and we're putting it into um, you know client event parties and charitable things and philanthropic things and supporting our local schools and you know. That's where we are right now. Sweet. And I love that you're being very transparent. And, and for people that are listening, you have to realize that it's not always in your best interest to always talk about everything that you do good as much as you don't want to talk about the things that you do bad. Because if you continue to just cover that up, you're never going to get better. And what Jason just said was the, the thing that we're best about is actually we're changing things to make ourselves even better because we've noticed that... We've been going down this path of leads. We've been going down this path of different things. And really, we need to realign ourselves. We need to get even better. And even the number one team people is doing things and changing and focusing and tracking and measuring why to get better. And a lot of people don't do that when they get to be the number one team or when they become the number one agent or really at all. So I think that it's very powerful that, you know, when I ask, you the question of what's your best thing you basically said our best thing is hey we're going to get better and we're going to focus on it different things but we're really going to just realign ourselves back to relationships back to becoming that team of interest back to just attracting the right clients and the reason that you want to do that correct me if i'm wrong but the reason that you want to do that is you want to work with people who want to work with you and the reason that you want to do that is because you want to create a business and life that you love. If you're working with people that don't like you, if you're working with people that don't agree with you, if you're working with people that don't look like you and act like you and dress like you, they're not going to give you a referral. It's just a one-time shot and then you're on to the next. So you're in this continuous chase mode, which is very hard to be in because if you're continually chasing, well, if somebody doesn't take the, the bait, where's the next you know piece of business coming from it really is against the grain you know you're swimming upstream constantly and it it really if you want to like total transparency it goes back it goes, and we want total transparency okay. all right well it goes it goes way deeper than that okay because you think um most real estate agents are embarrassed to ask for business from people that they know like and trust or people that know like and trust them so for me, you know, I always wanted a way to passively grow my real estate business because I, you know, I didn't have a very good reputation in my town. So just kind of like the class clown, the kid that was always drunkest at the party, the parents, you know, word travels fast when you're kind of like the problem child in your community. So, uh, and that just continued through college through graduation, you know, burned a lot of bridges, didn't get invited back to a lot of houses, that kind of thing. So for me to figure out that, hey, you know, I'm great at, 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 at selling, I'm great at building relationships, but I've ruined a lot of relationships in my past. My past is not the greatest thing. So I was like, wow, I can be successful in real estate by building new relationships and it's kind of starting with a clean slate. So I built a really successful real estate business around all these new relationships. And the thing is, is that a lot of that stuff I just told you was in my head. You know, the people, the judgments and all that stuff, they're like, he was just a kid. But see, it kind of stuck with me and I just carried it with me, all that insecurity moving forward. And I was just kind of, I was hiding behind the computer. I'm really good at generating leads. And, and it became an obsession of mine. And, um, you know, luckily through coaching and mentors and connecting with different people, we're, we're making that switch back to relationships. And I can already feel, Jonathan, like a lot of this pressure coming off me. Good. You know, that's so. great. I'm glad. And, um, you know, for anybody that's listening, you know, even if you're in the same industry, there's there's ways that you act that are different than the next person. There's things that you're better at than the next person. You're not all in competition mode. If you're, if you're running the same type of real estate business, if you're running an insurance business, if you're running a mortgage business, whatever type of business that you're doing, stop looking at people 
as competition and look at them as a person and try to figure out how you can even help that person because guess what? In return, they will help you. So those relationships are huge. And I want to get into um, something that you talked about, which was you're really good at generating leads. And I'll ask the first question, see where it goes, and then we'll okay. go to the next question. What, what would you say is when you're generating leads, and let's say there's a real estate agent listening, um, you know, what's something that you do that somebody else isn't doing that they should be doing? Well, I would say the foundation of that would be just being a learning-based agent. And I would define, and, you know, if we get to talk about the impact conference, we'll, we'll come back to the, the learning-based issue that I think plagues the real estate business. But I started um, following a guy by the name of Ben Kenny. I, was in, I started my real estate career with Keller Williams. And Ben Kenny was hosting webinars and doing all these things and was talking about internet lead generation. So a learning-based agent, by my understanding of the definition, is an agent that is con- focused on continual learning and implementation. It's those two, those two key things. So I think um, agents that have an issue with lead generation, they're, they're not learning-based, and that can be just knowing what to say. You know, knowing what to say to the people in your phone to generate an appointment. Mm. But it can also mean, where do you go on the internet? What bait do you throw out that's going to, you know, attract a lead? And what kind of technology do you need, you know, to, to hook that lead into your, your CRM or your database? So that's where it started for me is, is you know, learning how to, to, to attract these leads, getting them into the database, and then learning how to convert them. So a lot of people are chasing leads, uh, myself included, have been there. And I think the reason that we've gone down this path is because we become good at lead generation. However, we neglect the relationships. When we do that, the things don't work for us in our business and our lives. What's a change that you've made and a piece of advice that you would give to somebody that is solely chasing leads, generating leads, focused on leads. What's something that has happened to you where you say, you know, if I were to go back and and, and redo this, I would have done it this way instead. Yeah, I I just, I really feel like that. And of course there are, you know, exceptions to every rule, but I really feel like there's only a certain amount of time that you can trace, that you can chase, excuse me, before you start attracting. I was getting worn out just drained mentally and physically from the lead generation and the constant, you know, Coach Burt talks about it all the time, how it takes more energy to convert a new relationship than it is to nurture an existing relationship. So, you know, for me, though, I think the big thing is, is I went through 2008. So I was a realtor, got my license in 2004. So it was really, really good for a while. I mean, when I got my license, Literally, you could host a couple open houses a weekend and make a really good living in real estate. Um, But 2008 happened, and then where I live on the Alabama Gulf Coast, we had the oil spill in 2010. And I don't care how scared real estate agents were when the collapse almost happened in 2008. They didn't experience the oil spill, which was like the phones stopped ringing. I mean, they they thought literally that there was going to be oil coming out of our kitchen sinks. You know, when that whole, uh, um, I mean, you saw, you probably saw on the news, you know, just hundreds of gallons of oil spilling into the Gulf. So, I mean, people are like, everybody's going to move. Nobody wants to move there. It was just a disaster. But it's the, it's the concept of building an undisruptible business. If you're chasing leads, that means you're, you're chasing new relationships. Those, those lead sources are going to dry up in times of, economic hardship, environmental disasters, things like that. But you've got these relationships. If you've got a business that's built on relationships, in my opinion, it's undisruptible. So I'd say that's part one. And then part two is scale. Like these teams that are doing $100 million, $200 million in transactions a year, they're not chasing. They're attracting. So let's flip the script and let's talk about the agent, excuse me, impact agent conference that you hosted in New Orleans. Let's talk about what you're doing on the coaching aspect. Um, And first off, I'd like to thank you for inviting me to New Orleans because that was phenomenal. And I think that 
there were phenomenal relationships that I made because of that, which go back to you. I was actually um, talking with Bradley Flowers. And he goes, how, did, how do you know him? And I said, well, let me, let me trace that back. I know him because he was in coaching with me. However, I really became to know him because he invited me to come to New Orleans. And I really started to know him because now I understand what's working, what's not working, the good, the bad. That's when you really start knowing somebody. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate uh, everything that you've done for that conference. And uh, I know it wasn't easy. And I know no. it's still not easy. No. And I know that there have been probably some nights where you were kicking yourself. There's been nights where you're regretting what you did. There's been nights where you're like, man, am I going to keep this thing going? What are you doing at this point? And you might not be doing anything, but what are you doing at this point to push through that, to fight through that, to see the light at the end of, end of the tunnel, to realize that, hey, you know, maybe there is something there. Maybe if I just make that one connection, we can really vamp it up. What, what, what are you doing right now to try and push yourself through that to see the light at the end of the tunnel? Because I know it's, it can't be easy. It's not. I mean, you know, it was... We, we um, was, is it Cody Askins that puts on eight percent nation? That is him. Yeah. So we, I heard him say, you know, um, that putting on eight percent nation is the hardest thing he's ever done in his career. And so I know when he says that, I know exactly what he means, because putting on an event and spending a hundred thousand dollars or one hundred fifty thousand dollars on speakers, and then you know signing a big, you know, a, a, an additional one hundred fifty thousand dollar contract with a hotel and. And, and, and all the stuff that goes into that, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's sleepless nights. It's a lot of stress. It puts a lot of stress on everything else that's going on in, in your life. And uh, especially when, you just, when you're doing it the first time and you don't know what you don't know. And, um, you know, I, I, it's funny. He's, when Cody was telling the story about how 8% Nation came about, it was at 10x. And that's where it happened for me. Mm. You know, at, at the same 10X2 in Las Vegas was when I want to put on Impact Agent Conference. And that's where 8% Nation was born. So it was interesting to hear him say that. Um, but I'm a conference junkie. I believe in live immersive trainings. So I know the trend right now is kind of starting to go towards, you know, these virtual summits and things like that. But I just feel in my heart that this is where the real stuff happens. Like the really good stuff happens when we all get in a room together and start collaborating and networking and building relationships. I mean, you miss all that. You miss all that at a virtual summit. It's the exact same reason why I was telling you earlier that my podcast is now in person because people answer things a little bit differently in person. Mm -hmm. You can dive deeper in person. You can really understand and feel what they believe, what they don't believe in person, where at least for me, online podcast, I just didn't get the same out of the person. And the relationship wasn't built very well. It was kind of that person was on my podcast and that's pretty much all I know. But when I sit down at a coffee shop with someone and we do a podcast, we walk away with that and we're like, most people don't sit down with me at a coffee shop and do a podcast. You know, we're, we're growing on a much deeper level, which like you said, is, is because it's, it's in person. One question that I've been asking to the last few guests was a question that was asked to me and it's great because if you prepare for the question you ask it differently so we're sitting in a coffee shop okay mm -hmm. if somebody were to walk into the door person could be dead or alive but let's say that they can walk into the door um who would you want to have coffee with and why God dead or life. alive number one person well, this is going to be like probably like just this is totally outside of the real estate industry. That's but, perfectly fine. Um, but I, I would I would probably say uh, Robin Williams. And why? Just, I mean, I feel like he's my favorite. Was my favorite actor, or it will always be my favorite actor. Uh, unfortunately, he is no longer living. But just grew up with him and admire him, and just fascinated by his brain. If you want to just talk about having a, a, a conversation with somebody that you'll probably never forget, 
Mm. I mean, this guy, I mean, I just can imagine I would walk away from this conversation because he's not just a, a, a funny guy. I mean, just really insightful, brilliant, um, you know, obviously very creative, but he was, you know, in some of the most dramatic roles we ever, you know, saw on screen and, and ones where we walked away and our face hurt. So I would imagine there would be this kind of turmoil of emotion sitting down and talking with him because, you know, I would want to ask him a lot of questions. But if you haven't seen the documentary that they did uh, about him and his life and just um, just the struggle that was going on with him internally, a um, lot of self-esteem issues, you know, um, a lot of the things I think we all struggle with. But you look at somebody like that and you think, that person is amazing. Like, he's got it all together, but man – was he the hottest mess or one of the hottest messes on the planet? But, um, yeah, it's, that's a really tough question. But, um, you know, I think it's on my mind because my wife puts quotes on the mirror for me and little inspirational things all the time. And uh, she knows how much I love him and, and, and uh, just put one up there recently. So he's what's, been on my mind. What's your number one regret in life? Oh, gosh. This is, uh, this is going to be uh, an easy one, I think, for me. But... Um, you know, it's really, I let myself off the hook probably way more than I should because all of my big regrets in life have led me like right here to this table. And so I just, it's almost unfair, Jonathan, that I, you know, because like I've kind of alluded to the fact that I've had some issues with like substance abuse and things like that and just was never a good student and never appreciated what I needed to appreciate and all the opportunities I had. I mean, with the the childhood that I had, the resources that I had, you know, I could have gone to any school, gotten any education I wanted, done anything. I could have been anything, you know, if I had put my mind to it. But, you know, I was just, like, fascinated with, like, catching a buzz and girls. That was like, you know, there wasn't anything else in life that really, really mattered. So, um, you know, my wife and I were joking the other day, um, talking about like how we met and, and all that stuff. And so she recalled a memory where we were working at the same restaurant and she came in one day for a shift and she saw me hanging through the ceiling. Like they'd sent me up, you know, uh, into the, the attic of the restaurant to get bar glasses. And, uh, you know, like I had gotten high before work. And as soon as I walked, which would have been fine because I'd been high at work a bunch of times. But when I walked in this particular afternoon, the manager was like, hey, Jason, I need you to go up to the attic and get some bar glasses up there. And I was like, man, this is not a good time. But it made for a, a, a funny story to see me like come crashing down through the ceiling. There's an a older couple over here eating ribs. It was a barbecue place. And yeah, exactly. And they're just like eating their ribs, looking up, going, what is he doing? Um, so... That's just the kind, and there's stories after stories after stories of people that know me. That's what they remember is some, a time where Jason fell through the ceiling or, you know, um, wrecked his car or just did something completely off the wall and stupid. Um, and, uh, and so it's hard. It's hard to think about, you know, all the money and time and effort and all the people I dis, uh, uh, disappointed in my life. But it has, it's, it's why I'm sitting right here. It's why I met my wife. It's, you know, and my wife has like totally changed my life and really helped me um, become the person I am today. So, so what would you sum that up in is when I said your number one regret is that word, what, what's that word? What's your answer? What's the one word? Oh, right. Uh, I keep eluding your questions. Um, you know, it probably goes back to, um, if I had to put one word on it, I don't know. But it's it all a it sentence. All, it all stemmed from from insecurity. Insecurity, there it is. And I'm glad you. I'm glad you have something there. Well, I was just gonna say. I mean, it just that has been the theme of my whole life, and that's why I'm on this path of like self development and just can't get away from personal growth. And I think it's huge that. You're saying that, and hopefully this podcast will help you even more because you're be, 
I guess we have like a vulnerability <laughs> transparency episode, but it's good because it's it's going to help you break through. And what's great about it is sometimes you can't see the picture because you're inside the frame. And for me, I'm sitting here thinking, man, man this guy's done phenomenal things for me. This guy has done phenomenal things for other people. This guy has done a lot, but you're seeing it differently. However, like you said, we wouldn't be here sitting and doing this. Uh, some of the connections that you know I've texted you now with, that would have never happened because we wouldn't have known each other. Mm -hmm. Who knows what that might lead to? Who knows what me telling you about this event team could lead to? Like, There's so many different things but when we look at it from one perspective, we don't see everything else the way that it's actually happening. So for me, being an intel officer, I've, I was always trained, and that's kind of why my brain works this way now, is sit back, relax, Jonathan, and think of what they're thinking in a different way. So when you're talking about, you know, I fell through the ceiling, but that's how I kind of met my wife. I hosted an event that didn't go as, as planned, um, but I want to do better. And you're thinking of these things and you're regretting different things. I'm thinking of, man, this guy is phenomenal. Like we got to get this guy seen by more people. We got to get the event to more people. We got to do more. And I think for you, you have to realize that what you're doing is good enough. You just have to see things a little bit differently mm -hmm. because if you can see that, you know, and, and if you can accept that what you've done is good enough, then you don't have to worry about everything else and doing all this. And, oh, I heard this event did this, so we're going to do that too. And, oh, oh, I heard, like, we should get this person. Like, you're, you, you, you got to realign your focus. And anybody listening, you, you should do the same thing if you're going through this as well because you've probably done 50 different things that we don't know about, a thousand billion different things that we don't know about that we would be like, man, this is phenomenal. This is great. And I think for you, this is kind of me like coaching the coach. <laughs> you got to, you know, you got to take a step back and realize that there are people and there are, there are impactful moments that you've already had that you need to build off of rather than going down a new path, rather than restarting again. Like you've already realized, okay, I can make some different changes. You've already realized that I need to make some different changes. You've already realized that things might not have been the way that I've envisioned them, but you've already kind of went through those downtimes. So there's only one way to go right now. And I always tell people you're either moving up or you're getting up, but you ain't falling down because right. if you're falling down, then there's somebody else that's going to take your spot. So I, again, I go on rants when I get passionate about something, but I'm really passionate about helping people. I don't know if you know this about me, but in 2011, President Obama gave me his call to service award for being the number one volunteer in the United States. I am passionate about helping people because I never had anything growing up. If somebody were to have put as much in me growing up, it would have been phenomenal, but I'm glad they didn't because now I am passionate about helping people. I went down a path of success, accolades. I love this. Let's pat Jonathan's back. But that didn't fill my void. What fills my void right now, sitting at a coffee shop, filming a podcast, like how can I help this person? So whatever I can do to help you, you let me know because I'm super grateful for you putting me on your stage. Um, and I'm super grateful for... You know, you just being transparent with me when a lot of people will come onto the podcast or a lot of people, not really on the podcast, but a lot of people I meet just, they're just, just continue to just, you know, just go through the motions, fake it, not really dive in, not become transparent. You know, when I ask that question, that's the first time I've ever asked it, but on the podcast, but when I ask people, what do you regret in life? They're like, I don't regret anything. I don't do this. I don't do that. And you instantly were like, Crap, like there's been some moments that have changed me and it's not necessarily regret, but you're at least realizing that things could have been different. However, they've led you to where you're at now. And I think that if I keep going on this rant, we're going to be here all night. But <laughs> what, what, what's a piece of advice that you, have, that you would give to somebody that has started something, failed, started something, went 10 times backwards, started something 
didn't go as planned, but if you take this piece of advice, you can start taking these baby steps, which I'm hoping you're doing is you're taking these baby steps to realization that, man, we do have something here. Man, we can make this. Like, what are, what's happening over the course of the last 48 hours, the course of the last month that is, like you said, I'm starting to see that, you know, I do have this connection or we can make these things work. What's, what's going on in your mind? I'm trying to extrapolate that. Well, My question might not be as good as me saying, what's going on in your mind? Yeah, I think, <laughs> it's, I think it's important for people to, who are listening to understand that the past is perfect. Mm. Their past is perfect. Your mm. past is perfect. The, the, the stuff that was imperfect about your past is perfect because mm. it got you here. Now, Impact Agent Conference was far from perfect. Um, you know, uh, I do believe that it impacted people greatly. And I can't really see the good stuff, like you said. You know, I can't, um, I can't recognize it. It's not visible. It's not tangible to me right now. It will be. It will be because of the fact that we're sitting here right now, because of the unseen that I can't see in the future. But I think these people that, um, you know, that are trying things and it's not meeting their expectations, the only sad thing is if they give up. But they've got to learn from every, there's a lesson to be learned in every failure. You know, it's our greatest teacher. So if, if they're taking two steps forward and one step back, you know, what is that step back? What can, what can it teach them? You know, it's checking that ego at the door and going, all right, what can I learn from this? And then in terms of the vulnerability and the transparency and the authenticity, you know, I don't know about you, but like I was raised, like you don't show emotion. You don't tell people what's going on. You don't let people inside your personal business. And I think there's a lot of discussion about that right now. You know, Brene Brown and, you know, you hear some names, um, H, the book H3 Leadership is where it started for me. But then it just keeps getting re and reinforced by, you know, these other thought leaders that are talking about being vulnerable. But that's how you lead people. I mean, if you go in there, I'm, you know, you, we were in the Tom Ferry organization together. And I just can't tell you, like, how many events I went to where it was just about GCI and units and everything's rosy and I'm doing this and that. It's all a bunch of bullshit. You know, um, and then you talk to somebody who left that person's team. I was like, that person's a freaking psychopath. Mm. Like they burned a bridge with me when I left. It was the hottest mess. That team was just a disaster. And you're like, <laughs> shit, that was fake. You know, we could have had a really meaningful discussion about how real estate teams are really like families. They're dysfunctional. I mean, that's a real conversation. So, um, you know, I, the, the first point I would make is, is for people to kind of give themselves a break because your past is perfect. It's about mindset. It's about your mindset, about your past and your failures and mistakes and regrets and all those things. And then number two is that vulnerability is actually leadership. I love that. Vulnerability is actually leadership. And a lot of people need to rewind this episode and go through it a few times, listen through the rants before you... Uh, close off and, and, and just really just focus in on what Jason is saying because he is being transparent with you. He is leading by example when he says vulnerability is leadership. Well, that's him being vulnerable and that's him uh, also coming to the real, realization just like I had that, you know, even if you do hit these GCI numbers, even if you do sell X amount of houses, even if you do this, does that really make you happy? Does that really fill the void of creating a business and life that you love? If it doesn't, there's some things that you need to take a step back on in order to create your breakthroughs to have that business and life that you love. So I'm glad that, that you touched on that. Jason, where can people find you? Where can they connect with you? And what is the URL of our landing page that we're going to be setting up? <laughs> Well, I, I would say that I, I love uh, Facebook. If you cannot find me on Facebook, then you're not looking very hard. But I mean, or I, you don't have a Facebook. Some people still don't have a Facebook. I don't know why. That would, <laughs> that scares me to even think about that. But um, if sim if people send me a Facebook message, I do respond, and I don't care where they are, where they're from, what they do. Um, if they want to ask me a question, they can connect with me there. So Facebook Messenger, I think, is the easiest thing to do. Um, 
you know, if you're interested in, in real estate coaching right now, I have uh, impactagentcoaching.com. And, um, and for real estate, it's just jasonwillrealestate.com. And what is our landing page for our conference? Um, what URLs do you got out there? Because I, I don't know if you're like me, but I'm a URL junkie. So yeah. my, my GoDaddy's just filled with URLs yeah. <laughs> just in case. So I think we should probably do, um, you know, like impactagentconference.com. Perfect. Yeah. So impactagentconference.com. We're going to set up a registration to pre-register for the event. If we get 100 people within one week, we'll then send you a free month of the hashtag agent so you can get a free month of all of our content, which is going to show you social digital marketing strategies from a completely different perspective. Why? Because I think of things drastically different. When people come to me and they say they want leads, I go, okay, great. Let's go do this instead because I can help you there better and make you more money. Because really, if you want leads, it's because you want money. If you want money, it's because you want to do something. So if I can show you, you can do that in a different way. Why wouldn't you do that? So we're going to give you a free month of the hashtag agent if you pre-register for Jason's event. And then what we're going to do is we're going to do a free free F-R-E-E digital deep dive with me personally for every single person that pre-registers. You can do it online or in person, like Jason said, is the best thing to do. So again, go to impactagentconference.com, pre-register for Impact Agent 2. Anybody that you refer to that site, they will also get that and we'll double the offer. So two deep dives with me and two months of the hashtag agent. Is there anything else that I can do for you? And that's an honest question. Wow, I don't know. that's a lot. You've already done a lot. So I think we're probably good for now. All right, let me back off the offer. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. So make sure that you guys follow Jason. Uh, Jason, I know your time is valuable. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for driving from your other hotel to be here because, uh, you know, I'm, I'm glad that we're forming a better relationship and, and bond. And, you know, I do go to a lot of conferences as well, but it's these moments that really, like, solidify things in the future for me. As much as I would love to meet everyone and be the best person to everybody, unfortunately, I can't. Right. But I love people who tell it like it is, no matter what, good, bad, ugly. And they're also willing to break down their own barriers to say, look, I ain't perfect. And I think that since you've had these different realizations over the last year, six months, five minutes, then, you know, just talking about that to me, like, I'll go to my guy and be like, dude, like, we got to get the next thing scheduled. Like, who do we know that can do this? When you, when you don't do that to me, I'm like, it ain't going to work for that person. Right. And it, it, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work. Why? They're not telling me the truth. And if they don't tell me the truth, it, it ain't going to work. That's so good. thank you so much. Again, remind people of your handle on Instagram. Oh, yeah, we didn't do that. So it's, it's at. <laughs> See at, how I did that? I was yeah. like, uh, let, <laughs> yeah, so it's at impact agent. Sweet. At impact agent. Again, Jason, thank you so much. Thank you. And uh, this has been awesome. Hey, everybody, this is Jonathan Hawkins. Thank you so much for staying until the very end of this podcast. I definitely appreciate it. As always, make sure to reach out to me via social media at Jonathan Hawkins official. Send me a comment, shoot me a DM. If you have any questions, you can also comment below. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe below. And remember, who you hire truly matters.